is now called to order. First off, I would start with a land acknowledgement. AHD acknowledges with respect that the land we are on today is the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Kumeyaay Nation. We recognize the indigenous peoples as original stewards of this land and all the relatives within it. As these words of acknowledgement are spoken in Europe, the ties nations have to their traditional homelands are renewed and reaffirmed. Next up, we have roll call. Nadia Alfaraj. Alexa Andrade. Here. Ashika Arasu. Ceci Baran. Chloe Cohen. Here. Kimberly Cruz. Here. Siri Dondu. Here. Alana De La Torre. Here. Jake Dredge. Here. Tiana B. Here. Lauren Bettis. Here. Eliza Gear. Here. Chloe Holm. Here. Claire Ingray. Here. Aricella Levier. Here. Natalia Mina. Here. Elizabeth Mickelson. Here. Julian Rada. Here. Sabrina Richards. Here. Valentina Rodriguez. Here. Daniela Velarde. Here. Madeline Wu. Next up, we have the approval of the agenda. Senator Lauren. I move to approve the agenda. Amend the agenda <laughs> to include a line item under new business. Um, under vote on amendments to student board bylaws, I'd like to add discussion and on approval for and the initiative of grocery, um, grocery rides. We have a motion being seconded to add a vote on a Senate initiative fund request. Uh, do we have any further discussion? Now we'll move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your placards. All those opposed, and all those abstain. Motion passes. <coughs> We've now amended the agenda. Do we have any uh, further motions to approve or further amend the agenda? Oh, yes. Okay, sorry. I just said time limit for the agenda item, so I will um, set that to 10 minutes. With that being said, do we have any motions on the floor? Senator Madden? We have a motion and a second to approve the amended agenda. Do we have any further discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your placards. All those who oppose, and all those who abstain. Motion passes. Next up, we have the approval of the minutes. Do we have any motion to move forward regarding the minutes? Senator Madden. I move to approve the minutes from October 28th. Seconded to approve the minutes from October 28, 2020, 2021. Do we have any further discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your placards. All those who oppose, and all those who abstain. 
Motion passes. Uh, report from the Speaker of the Senate. So um, this heads up, as you know, I'll probably send out um, details for Google invite in the near future regarding this, but Charlie Johnson has a generously invited all of us um, to lunch at the Grand Terraza on December 7th from 12 to 1 p.m. Um, I understand we all have different schedules and all that, but um, I strongly encourage you to attend if you can. Um, so I want I would like as many of us to be there as possible. Um, and also, when you get that invite, whether it's from uh, Ricky, who is Charlotte's assistant, or it's me, please um, accept it or decline it so we know who's coming, so it makes it easier to set the lunch up. Um, another update, so Ari, Lucia, Logan, and I met with Dean Shell Roberts. He's from the School of Engineering. And we've talked about, again, uh, flexibility, um, particularly in regards to Zoom and task recordings. Um, it was a really good conversation. It was very really receptive. Um, and he offered some useful perspective into the situation from an administrator standpoint. Um, so that was cool. And I'm also currently working on scheduling a media meeting with the VISTA. Um, and so that's all for me. And next up, we'll have reports from committee chairs and coordinators. Hi, everybody. So first, um, we added Senator Brendan to our committee. Um, we arranged and planned new meeting time for the Convent Academics Committee. Um, and then we're almost done with choosing our faculty for the grants review meeting with Ari. And the grants deadline is next week, November 8th, so Monday. And as a committee, we have been developing initiatives that we plan to work on or finish planning our next meeting. And finally, an exciting event this Friday for the business school at KAPJ, you need to RNCP. And I encourage you all to go since it gives you a compass, passport, and flex points plus networking if you attend a full event. And there's going to be CEOs like the SDGE CEO and the Qualcomm CEO, Ace Parking CEO. So it's very exciting. I encourage you all to go. Hello everyone, so some updates from the IDEA committee are that I met with Dr. Yuna dixon Reef on Monday and we discussed numerous ideas to collectively work on um, with the student body and the administration and I gained an administrative standpoint on IDEA related themes and what the administration is doing to work towards IDEA related concerns. I also plan on having a follow up meeting with her in the coming weeks because she said that she would gather some information regarding our ideas. Um, I also met with Ari to discuss details about the Horizon Project and the What to Fix event, and she attended our committee meeting this week, which was great. Um, I also plan on meeting Xian on Tuesday regarding funding of multicultural organizations, and I'm currently working on meeting representatives from numerous multicultural organizations. Some other upcoming events related to the idea themes are that the Multicultural Night is happening tomorrow, from 5 to 8 p.m. I just want to encourage everyone to go and inform their constituents about this event. The BSU is also having a comedy <coughs> night on November 15th at 7 p.m. and they're having a call for acts which is due by November 8th. So if you or anyone you know is interested, please reach out to them about that. Thank you. Hello everyone, I apologize for being late today. Um, today the Student Art Committee will be having their meeting after Senate and we will hopefully be voting on the student org bylaws today on the amendment. Hello, everybody. As you all heard, um, I our committee submitted the budget proposal for grocery lift trips, and so we'll have a little discussion and hopefully be voting to approve that later today in Senate. Um, as of for the rest of it, we kind of heard similar things last week. We're working on small steps to develop the cell talk initiative and also all of our committee members were tasked with submitting high traffic locations and times on campus for meetings for some planning ahead of bi-weekly programming. Awesome. Um, not a whole ton for me today, guys. Um, the thing is, no, the Center for Health and Wellness Promotion, they have these mental health screenings. Um, I didn't know this was a thing. Uh, it's pretty cool though. It just kind of check in and kind of see where your mental health is. You can fill it out. There's also specific ones like if you feel like specifically anxious about something or another, like they have these specific screenings that you can fill out. And just lets the uh, 
the health and wellness center, I kind of know the students' needs on campus, like, you know, where, where students are struggling and how they can best support them. Um, so there's the link for that. I encourage you guys to throw that out and maybe others around you to do the same. Um, last thing, the QPR, which is a suicide prevention training, um, is this upcoming Wednesday, November 10th from 8 to 9. There will be breakfast provided. Um, they're doing it at different times throughout the rest of the semester to encourage more people to come and provide better events. So, thank you. Um, I'm Hello everybody. Um, First up, I finally received a response from Charles Rama from the director of dining, and um, unfortunately, he said that some of the behind the scenes problems with the regular hours in Boston, so um, he's not sure about training and how to bowl. So I did ask her if she needs help or and just some clarity on what exactly was going wrong with the original hobby boxes. Um, and then I started an agenda list for the Eco Fair. If you guys have any ideas about who you would like to bring into the Eco Fair, this is great. We're trying to also focus on the diversity and um, in addition to the sustainability impact. So, um, you know, uh, I'm just leaving there. <laughs> okay. And then um, also we had a meeting with Cloud Cycle. Um, so they've worked with Google and Facebook and other really big companies. So we're not sure how valuable, valuable it would be if we had like some of our merch recycled. So we're kind of small university. So we did talk about possibly working with UCSD and SPSU as kind of like pooling those resources so we could have a uh, more productive recycling of our products. And then um, still working on a sustainability coalition group chat with the Office of Sustainability. And the last thing to join, apologies for the typo, the CFOCH is tomorrow. So please get the word out or join if you would like. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you all for your updates. Next up, we'll have reports from the ASG Executive Board members. All right, hi everyone, happy Thursday. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, so just wanted to let you all know to save the date for Tuesday, December 7th from 12.30 to two. I know that's also the same time that Charlotte invited you all to lunch, um, but we're having a what to fix or WTF forum. Essentially, this is a space for students to kind of talk to their senators or um, ASG members and also various administrators that we're planning to invite to this to kind of ask questions about anything relating to their experience with USD or just something that they want to see overall, uh, maybe something that ASG can help with, just really anything. And um, this is just more or less a forum so that we can have conversations. Um, the location is to be determined, but it most likely will be in the third floor at Silky Courtyard. Um, we're planning to ask administrators to come to this event. So we'll give you more <coughs> updates as we go along, but please save the date for December 7th. We'll send out a Google Calendar as well. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to follow up with me. And I'm hoping to share the student input survey results with you all at Senate next week. This week just couldn't allow for the, uh, the agenda and timing and everything, but that's hopefully going to be on the agenda for next week. And we were planning to have a meeting with committee chairs and coordinators regarding just what we can do to collectively to support um, students regarding COVID and the in-person transition, but that meeting is going to be rescheduled. And currently I'm starting to um, reach out to students to be appointed to the Senate uh, per the judicial branches um, vote on having with the bylaws and allowing for me to appoint senators and I'll be ch attending the Change Maker Hub core meeting next week. Um, my email is not up there but it's asgpresidentsandiego.edu if you have any questions. And then I'll give Ari some up updates too. So Ari met with Dean Rogers of Sean, um, Speaker of Senate, Chief Staff Logan, and Director Lucia and they're, she's going to help uh, draft an email with him, I think back to him to follow up. And she attended the idea committee meeting to touch base with Siri and she's planning to debrief with Siri today. New marketing materials were sent to us from New York Times um, for the uh, New York Times subscription that all students have based from her funds. 
and she's planning to share the student input survey results right now at University of Southern. Our quick updates from me, as mentioned, we already met with the Dean of the Engineering School and we're following up with him to try and get some actionable change based on our meeting. Uh, the only other thing is I met with Margaret Leary, who's actually here today, um, and more updates to come on us getting the proposal written. Um, for my update, as uh, you mentioned, uh, hopefully you all will be voting on the student org committee bylaws, and I'll give another uh, summary of it before you all vote. Um, and you, you are feel, sorry, you are free to ask me any questions before uh, you all vote on that as well. Um, I went to the dean's advisory council uh, yesterday. Um, yeah, sorry, but it was yesterday, and um, to be honest, I wasn't very happy with how that meeting went. Um, I was there to basically ask the deans to encourage their professors to record their lectures and have Zoom options available for students. Um, and I was kind of met with a defensive response, um, which, you know, is valid, um, kind of. Uh, they were also warning me about the implications of recording lectures, such as like the intellectual property concerns, lawsuits, and legal challenges that could come with it. But I was uh, quite frankly disappointed in the way that that meeting went. Uh, they gave me a 15 minute time slot for that entire conversation uh, in which I only got to speak about seven until they were speaking the rest of the time. And I just, what I will be doing is following up with this really strongly worded and passionate response. Um, and we're, this is not the end of the conversation. I made that known. Um, and I hope that conversation continues to be had. I think that there's a lot of concerns that we need to bring to the deans of the different schools, and I hope to be doing that as well. Uh, Provost Baker was there as well, and I think she will be getting an email as well. Um, and then, in addition, uh, Judicial Branch will be starting to amend the Senate bylaws, just because there's a lot of inconsistencies with the bylaws and the Constitution, so hopefully we're going to comb through those, and then they will be coming back to Senate for approval. So on TPB, we just sent out offers to fill our uh, budget controller and brand manager positions. So we're waiting to hear back from the, the people we offered it to. Uh, we recently just have a new vice chair vacancy, so we are working on filling that one. And then our upcoming event, Winter Wonderland, will be on November 30th, and that's happening alongside with the Christmas tree lighting. So I hope to see you all there. We will probably need volunteers, and I just want to reiterate that Senate uh, senators are required to work one event per semester. So yeah, and any questions, concerns, uh, you can contact me and let me know. Thank you. That looks really all update, but um, working on doing ASGBC guidelines. So, for example, um, ASGBC convenes every Tuesday and to be considered for um, funding review by the committee, um, we're asking orgs to please have their funding submissions in by Friday morning to be considered for that following Tuesday. Um, there is an ASGBC vacancy still for religious um, and spiritual orgs. Um, and additionally, we also have the Get Involved Fund. We've only had one submission, and I'm currently working on creating um, specific guidelines for that fund. So for me, thank you for bringing the website to my attention. We already have like the whole marketing committee together, so starting next week, we're gonna start working on updates with the website. And then if you do have any questions or concerns, just please feel free to contact me. And I'm also hoping to highlight the Senate Meet the Team post in two weeks. So if you haven't post, if you haven't <coughs> sent your Google Forms, please do by that. Our first um, item of new business will be the NSSE and CECE results presented by Kim Navarra, Margaret Leary, and Holly Hoffman. Margaret Leary. 
Jeff Curtis, Krishna Lee Church in Berkeley. Great, so we're happy to be here today. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is sharing some results from a couple different surveys that we administer here at USD. And as students, I'm sure you're aware that we do a lot of surveying. And our intention is really, as the keepers of the data, to get this information out into the hands of people that can use it to make decisions on campus. So there's three surveys in particular that we're gonna be talking about today. The first survey is the National Survey of Student Engagement. It's called the NESI for short. And this is a national survey that gets administered here at USD every three years. And it goes to all of our first year students and our senior students and tries to just measure the general campus climate. The same time that that survey is going on, we have the Culturally Engaging Campus Environment Survey, or the CC for short. Again, this is on a three-year cycle, but instead of going to first years and seniors, it goes to our sophomores and juniors. So basically, everyone at the undergraduate level is gonna get one of these campus climate surveys. And then the third survey that we're gonna share some data with you today is called the Fall Transition Survey. This is a survey that we administer here, so it's not a national survey like the other two, and we send this out to all of our new students, so our new first years and our new transfer students during the third and fourth week of classes. And this is really an attempt to see how are the students doing at USD in those early stages, and what can we do to potentially help them increase their sense of belonging, make sure they're getting the support they need. Uh, we ask about a couple different dimensions, so academics, belonging, wellness, uh, finances, and then their future plans. And I also just wanted to share what our response rates look like for these surveys to give you an idea of how many students are taking them. So when we look at the data, we can kind of see, okay, there's a magnitude here. When we look at the Messi, uh, I've broken the response rates out by our first years and our seniors, and then comparing the 2018 results to the 2020 results. So you can see we're between 30 and 40% of a response rate on that survey. Looking at the CC for our sophomores and juniors, uh, that's a little bit lower of a response rate. We were 17 and 23% on the past two surveys that that has been administered. Uh, the fall transition survey, that it's on campus and we have the support of a lot of our student leaders to really push that survey out. Uh, so our response rates are, are pretty high on that. Uh, we hit about 80% this year, a little bit of a decrease compared to last year, but I think given that we were in a pandemic, people were at home in a virtual learning environment, more likely to take that survey. So now that people are back on campus, uh, more distractions, but I think we're still pleased with an 80% overall response rate. And we've just decided to pick out a couple things today. Uh, Margaret has got copies of all the questions on all of these surveys. We're not gonna go through all of it today because there's just a lot of information, but we thought that this might be helpful for you all to see what questions are being asked because we are happy to provide you all with information to support whatever initiatives that you're working on. But the categories that we decided to focus a little bit on, just to give you a preview, was sense of belonging, uh, the institution's commitment to diversity, uh, the supportive environment, and some things about institutional response. So I'm gonna kick it off by going through some of the belonging data. So this is from the NESI. So looking at our first year students, how they responded to three questions that fit into belonging. I feel comfortable being myself at this institution. I feel valued at the institution and I feel like a part of the community of the institution. The gray bar represents the 2018 results, and the blue bar is the most recent one in 2021. Uh, you can see that the, the numbers are fairly steady. There was a decrease on the last one. I feel like I'm a part of the community at this institution. Again, I think COVID and the pandemic has to be taken into consideration when looking at this data. And we looked at the same questions for our seniors. Again, you can see the differences between the numbers are not that big but there is a decrease again on feeling like they are part of the institution. When we go to the CC survey, uh, similar questions, I feel like I belong at this institution, I feel like I'm a part of the institution, and I feel a strong connection to the community of this institution. Uh, numbers for our sophomores and juniors are combined, it's not separated out like on the NESI, um, but you can see slight decreases from the previous time that this survey was in. We did want to take a little deeper look into this to see, you know, are there differences between student groups? So for this case, we looked at uh, the iPads race and ethnicity categories to see, you know, on that last question of feeling like you're a part of this community, you know, are there any differences between our groups? So as you can see here, are the groups where we had enough numbers to report out on statistics? 
Um, and again, gray bar is 2018 results, blue bar is 2021 results. There's a decrease in all groups here, with the exception of our black students. While that number is still low, at least it did move up in a positive direction from the 2018 survey. Looking at the CC, again, we focused in on uh, one, a, couple co a couple questions for one of our groups with our black students. So we wanted to see, you know, what are the changes looking like within this population? And you can see here, the 2018 numbers were pretty low in terms of agreeing or strongly agreeing with these statements, uh, but they are increasing in the 2021 results. For the fall transition survey, we have a lot of different questions about sense of belonging that we've created here. So in addition to those ones that are more community-based, we ask things about, you know, are you feeling homesick? How would you, uh, are you happy with your decision to attend USD? So there's a lot of other questions that we kind of put into the mix. And here I'm just showing you some mean scores. So this is on a one to five point scale. And we wanted to look at differences between our new first years and our new transfers to see, you know, are there different experiences that these two student groups are having? So just to show that we have a lot of data available. And then we also started to take a look at this by those same um, iPads, race, and ethnicity categories. And just to note, the labels here are abbreviations of the more formal full uh, descriptions for each group, just for space sake on the slides. But in this case, we're looking at, USD feels like a place where I'll be able to be my real self. And these are questions that were developed with a committee of faculty and staff to try to get at, you know, what are the best measures of this sense of belonging that we're, we're talking about here. And another one, I found people who I enjoy spending time with. This is, as our institutional research team has found, is one of the leading indicators for a student to not persist at USD. So when we're looking at the results from this survey in particular, this is one of those things that we're really keen into and um, trying to do some outreach to these students to see, you know, how can we help you or who can we connect you with to make sure that you're having the, the positive experience that you can here. Hi everyone. Um, first, I, before I start, I want to say thank you for your work. You all do really important work here at USD. It was great to hear all the reports from the committees and the um, uh, members to just understand the impact that you all can have on this, this uh, campus and our culture. And so it's important that we're sharing this information with you. It can give you some things to act on, right? So that's really why we're here. Um, the handout that you have, I just want to highlight, we just put that together because this is, you can see the <laughs> density of the information we're presenting. If you have questions or something stands out for you, you can jot it down so you can see the questions. And then we're gonna have discussion at the end and really wanna hear your questions and understand what else we can do with the data. So just wanna call your attention to that and invite you to, to go ahead and do that. So this group of questions on institutional commitment, um, again, this is for the NESI, so we have first year and senior student data. I also wanna point out that we were comparing 2021 to 2018 data so you can see whether there was a change, but you can also see what the total was, right? So if we look at this, we say, you know, the institution is doing better according to first year students on demonstrating a commitment to, to, the, to diversity between those two years, but is 70% good enough, right? That's another question that we should be asking when we look at this data. So we can see the change, but we also wanna know what's our minimum threshold? What should it be, right? What's good enough? And so those are some questions that I ask when I see this kind of information. Um, and so similarly, you know, we have a slight increase with um, students perceiving that we provide them with the resources needed for success in a multicultural world, and a slight decline in creating an overall sense of community. And I think, again, contextualizing that in spring 2021 with COVID is probably relevant. Um, and then we see with seniors that most of the numbers are slightly lower. So that's kind of a pattern that we see in Nessie that first year students tend to be more positive, senior students tend to um, have a slightly less positive view. Um, and again, we see that demonstrating a commitment to diversity here has gone down. Um, so just pointing those kinds of things out for you. And then when we moved to the, the CC, we had some similar questions there, but those were only asked in 2021, so we don't have comparative data here. But we can see that um, the lowest on this list set or this set of questions is diversity is a major priority at this institution. So you have the least agreement around that statement and the most agreement around this institution is proactive at offering programs that increase diversity and inclusion. So we see that kind of range in responses here. So because that diversity is a major priority, it was so low, 
we took that and broke it out by um, race ethnicity. And you um, can see the ends, the size of the groups that responded, and we can see that our black students responded um, with the least agreement on that statement. Um, I also want to point out that these groups are broken out. If someone identifies as more than one race or ethnicity, that they're counted in each of those categories, not just one. So the numbers don't add up to the total respondents. Um, and that's really important. We want to reflect voices um, in, in each of the categories that someone might identify. Um, and then similarly, we this is something that I'd love to talk to you all about today or another time. But um, you'll note that um, American Indian or Alaska Native and Native American um, Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander are not listed on here. And that's an ethical practice in data that we don't um, show responses that are less than 10 because it could be identifiable. Someone could be identifiable if we show that information. But we don't want those voices to be silenced. And so we're trying to, that's something we're grappling with in our office is how to represent that here. So um, again, we have work to do here. Right? You know, there's differences between our white students, Hispanic students, black students, and Asian students. And we have, we have some work to do here. Um, and then similarly on um, institutional commitment from sophomores and juniors from CC, um, there's a general sense that USD is gonna do something with this information, um, but to meaningfully address inequities is slightly lower here. So those are kind of the, the some of the takeaways that we wanted to present here for you. And then, oops, oh, sorry, we have one more. Um, sorry, so this is the last, so, um, we broke out the I trust the institution's leadership to meaningfully address inequities. And again, we see difference in among the groups. Again, with black students reporting the least amount of agreement here. So, and now I'm going to turn it over to Holly. So these items are related to um, So we 
we've seen a lot of data today. We have a lot more that we're sitting on. And I think we just wanted to provide this as an opportunity to open up to you all to see, first of all, what questions you have or just reactions that you might have to this information that's being presented today. And I think the other piece is just that we currently have a climate survey in the field right now for graduate students, faculty, staff, and administrators. It's gonna to close tomorrow. We have, we just passed a thousand participants, so <laughs> excited about that. We should have a robust enough data set to be able to disaggregate by different groups. Um, and then as I mentioned, we're, we're really wanting to talk to students about the best way to authentically represent the voices of when we disaggregate groups and the further down we go, the smaller they get. And so we wanna to try to find that that the right way to do that that authentically represents voices. And so um, if that is something that you all want to talk about, we'd love to hear that. But we also want to hear your questions about the data we presented, things, <laughs> things you want to know more about. Um, thank you so much for coming. First of all, uh, I really loved the presentation. I thought it was really thorough and it broke down um, all the questions really well. Um, but adding on to that, I was wondering who else gets this presentation? Um, like who on campus, faculty, administration, as well as is it just like they're sent the report or are they actually presented? Um, so essentially, we're always on a road show of sorts. So I go around to different groups that are interested in this information. And what I typically do is we'll arrange it so that it's specific to what they're interested in. As an example, I just presented to the First Gen Student Committee last night. Uh, I presented to the Student Life Division last week, um, doing some transfer information for Virginia. Uh, it's something that we're kind of always trying to push out because I think we end up being the keepers of the data There are formal reports as well, um, but I think my goal is to try to customize it as much as possible to whatever group I'm speaking to because I think it's more engaging. So commuters, for instance, we do some specific work with them around that student population. And the other group that we presented it to is the president's cabinet, which is the deans, vice presidents, a whole bunch of folks. And uh, we presented similar information, engaged them in discussions about what do we do with the information? What do we, how do we act on this? So those are, yeah. But we're excited to present to you because we know the reach that you have and um, other curiosities you might have about the data. Lauren? Yeah, so I saw the first year transition survey that you did break it down between first years and transfers. I was wondering if you, you just mentioned commuter students, do you also break down and look at the statistics for commuter students as well? And like, did you notice any significant differences in the first year transfer? Yes, the way I typically work is I start with the first years versus transfer group because it's a large number of students. And then taking the data around, engaging with people in conversations, I, I kind of respond to the questions that come up. So uh, for example, with commuters, I have not looked tried to do to engage the group was to say, you know, why do we think that, for example, black student responses were less positive than other student responses um, and engage folks at table discussions, like small group discussions to talk about why do we think that is and how can we change that? And we collected that information and the next president's cabinet meeting is coming up in December where we're also hoping to present the, the 
graduate student and faculty staff um, results as well. So in terms of like specific actions that came from that presentation, I'm not aware of, of them at the, like any specific things other than that at the moment. Um, but I do think that all of this information feeds into like our strategic plan and the, the strategies that are involved in those. And so um, you mentioned meeting with Dr. Regina Dixon Reeves and Dr. Joy Spencer, they co-lead the goal to um, strengthening diversity, inclusion, and social justice. And so I think that they have this information and kind of can see how it fits in with the different initiatives that are designed to help move that forward at the larger scale. And I think that's probably the level that the president's cabinet would be thinking at. Um, but I'd be happy to circle back with, you know, the, the next meeting is coming up in uh, early December. So I'd be happy to circle back and talk with you about that. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Um, for the meetings with the president's cabinet and presenting the information there, has there ever been like a consideration of inviting students from these demographics to maybe explain the responses or anything like that? I don't think that there has yet, but I think it's a great suggestion. And I think that's one of the ways that we can try to dig into why some groups either have changed over time or um, you know, why they're below a certain threshold that we would want to be for, around belonging or around you know, feeling like the institution's gonna do something, right? Um, and so I think that's something else that we're talking about in institutional research and planning is to say when we see a trend, like right now for the, the category that's Asian, we don't have the underlying data to break that down any further to see are there differences between subgroups within that category, but focus groups might be a way to help us understand, you know, what is this about? Like what's happening with this trend that we're seeing across the year <coughs> or across the, so the fall transition survey, we asked those belonging questions five different times to new students over the course of the year. And we see that it kind of can go up and down and it's different for some groups. So I, that is something that we're talking about and it's a capacity question too to think about how do we how can we get students to engage and do we have the resources to be able to do that? But I think it's a really important next step in terms of doing focus groups. But the suggestion to add students um, to those discussions, I think is a really good one and I can bring that forward. Welcome. Yeah, I wanted to start off by thanking you for coming and talk about the data that you presented. It was really interesting. I'm going to assume that the responses are anonymous. Do you have any way of tracking students, though, to see if a first year has different answers than when they're a senior, to see if their experience has changed during their time here? Senator 
anything. Hi, um, so this has been touched on a little bit, but I was just wondering, do you guys formally like interpret this data at all, or do you leave that up to the groups that you like present it to? Uh, it's a it's a mix of both. I think um, you know I'm the one who kind of runs the fall transition survey, and then Margaret and Holly do Nessie and CC. But my process is to kind of take my first pass, put together information to see or highlight what I'm seeing in terms of differences, and I'll run like statistical tests if there's groups that are large enough to do that. Um, but then it really becomes kind of a discussion project. So. Uh, Ashley Barton from DSRC, we had a, a presentation that we did together a couple weeks ago where we kind of laid out the data and was saying, this is what we're seeing, but what are you all seeing? You know, what stands out to you? Because I think everybody brings their own professional experience and their perspectives to the table. So um, I think that's something I'm always trying to be very careful of is I don't want to be the sole interpreter of data. Uh, I think that also connects to the, the comment or the question about the student wellness process that's been on my list of things that I want to try to get into our system. Um, we're just not quite there yet. Thank you. Yeah. I'll just add that the problem with doing some of this is that often the results lead to more questions, right? And we need to talk to students to find out what, you know, why is this group a little bit lower than last time we did the survey? And um, I think that's, that's the piece that you all can ask questions about with all the people, all the people that you mentioned that you met with, they've all seen this data, right? So you can ask to say, hey, I got this cool presentation with all this information and I saw that you also have it. Like, how can we do something about this? Or how do you interpret it? Um, but I think it, it, our role is a little bit of both, right? We're highlighting the things that we see as important or things that we want people to pay attention to. But in terms of the action that needs to be taken in response to it, at, that's not necessarily our role. It can be, right? Or we can be involved in that process, but it's also activating others to take action with the data. Kian? Um, in terms of like the why and like, I guess, taking action with this data, do you guys um, research further into exactly, I guess, like what is either like enhancing or like not enhancing the sense of belonging or I guess for diversity to like what specific things are contributing to the positive or negatives um, in response to that you're seeing. So it's a hard question because it's sometimes hard to assess causation, right? Like so if a student, you know, attended an event or participated in orientation or, you know, that that actually affects the way that they're noting their perception of belonging at the time that they sit down and take the survey. So there's limitations to the data, right? But it does give us, I think, a general picture of what it could look like. So the way that I think we, we work with that is through doing regular assessment of the quality of the things that we think are contributing to belonging, right? So we assess the quality of new student orientation, right? We assess the quality of um, the different events that get coordinated by CPD and other things. The things that we, through our research, through our professional experience, know contribute to belonging, um, and then we assess those to try to ensure high quality and to ensure inclusion, right, and equity through those processes. Um, so that's my perspective of how we do it because it's really hard to measure causation because it's gonna be different. If we asked you all the same question, you would probably say something different about what contributed to your, what contributes to your belonging. Point of order, the, a lot of times the discussion has ended, so it's been really interesting to have discussion, um, but both is in order.
and I'm here. Um, <laughs> so I'm not going to represent them on the projector just because I did that last time. And um, you all have now had the amendments for a good amount of time. So hopefully you all um, understand the amendments, but I'll just go over a very brief summary. So just to reiterate, uh, the amendments were made to center students in the approval process of the student orgs. Um, we copied the handbook's process of uh, starting with the student org committee, then going to the external affiliation committee, and then ending back at Senate for approval. So now here we are. Um, the amendments were publicly posted for five days per the bylaws, um, and now it requires a two-thirds majority vote from you all in order to be approved. Um, I also just want to give a shout out to Ceci for being amazing and super helpful during this process, so thank you, Ceci. Um, does anyone have any questions or motions? I move to approve the amendments to the Senate Board Bylaws. We have a motion and second to approve the amendments to the Student Board Bylaws. Do we have any further discussion? If not, we will move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your glasses. All those who oppose, and all those who abstain. Motion passes. Thanks, guys. Thank you. 
votes. All those in favor, please raise your placards. All those opposed, and all those who abstain. The motion passes. If you all are curious on what the what to fix form kind of looks like, just wanted to kind of pop a resource that um, we had two last year and they were all on Zoom, of course, and they're recorded and uploaded to the USD ASG YouTube um, account. So if you're curious kind of to see what that looked like in the past, feel free to search ASG what to fix forum on YouTube and you can reference that if you kind of want to see what that looks like. Hey, it's me again. Um, so I just kind of wanted to remind you all about Multicultural Night. I know Siri already touched on it, but um, it's hosted by the UFMC and it happens uh, every year. I've been to the event several times and it's really a lot of fun. There's free food. Um, it's just really great. So um, this is a great time for you all to show up for your constituents and really celebrate multicultural talent on campus. So, so just to reiterate, it's uh, tomorrow. Uh, they're providing food at 5 so you all can get dinner, uh, and then the show starts at 5.45. It's in the UC forum, so I really encourage you all to show up if you can. Um, and I will actually be judging with Jen Lee Eller, so it's going to be a good time. So, hopefully you all can go. I'm 
if I were to play for the jump right now, I would not say that. I would not say that. I would say that. You're right. You're right. You're right. The one time. Yeah. We'll let you have Yeah. Other than that, my life is Nobody's ear back here. All right. 